YouTube, what it do? It's your boy Rob back with another video. Hey, listen, today we got five year old who was sold by her mom to be valid to death. This mom sold her daughter for two hundred dollars. You dig it? You know what I'm saying two hundred dollars. That's two phone payments, and you gonna sell your daughter, bro? A five year old, bro? Like, I don't think people really think like what what what, what you needed two hundred dollars for so bad? Did you have to pay somebody? Did you? Had a bill to pay. What did it was it to fulfill your drug habit? Like what what was it that you needed two hundred dollars so bad? Twenty six minutes. Ay, ay, ay. Listen, get your bag of soda, your cup of chill. You know what I'm saying? Let's dive into it. Give you justice. This Put her under the jail. You what we as humans Honestly. The best we as humans can do. To give you justice. Right. Justice would be if I could reverse all of this. I can't. The jury has returned as its recommendation. Look at this hairstyle. Mario McNeil. But it's a nigga. That he be sentenced to death. The time is 43 months. And not the other diminished his pain. I think about those last seconds. And you. The last thing I've done, I've at. Oh, this is the dad. This oh, so it's a white dad. Chania Davis. Her mother no. sold her for two hundred dollars. A black mom, but I ain't gonna lie. I don't know if I'm racist, but I thought it was gonna be a white man. Man, now nah, Caucasians. <laughs> listen, all my Caucasian women. The hell is that? All my Caucasian women watching this. Listen, I rock with y'all. Why am I pausing? It's been 30 minutes. What he did to her is simply shocking. And her mother's decision to send her off like this is just as chilling. That's Shania's crazy. Shania's story is tragic. Look how adorable she end. is, bro. It's hard to imagine a five-year-old can go through this experience helpless, alone, and scared to death. Let's explore the horrific tale of Shania Davis and all the events that led up to her death. Shania Nicole Davis was born June 14th, 2004 in Dang, Fayetteville, she be... North Carolina. At first, she grew this up with a her while ago, parents, huh? Bradley Lockhart and Antoinette Davis, and her brother Carl, who was two years older. But as her parents split up, the siblings went on to live with their dad. Antoinette had a rough patch financially, partially due to her substance addiction, and she did Yup, I knew it. Drugs to raise two small kids. Nevertheless, she stayed close with little Shania. Shania loved both her parents very much. She was a happy-go-lucky girl who always smiled and loved pink and yellow. An innocent she was an child, energetic, yeah. outdoorsy type who loved riding her scooter and making friends wherever she went. Bradley loved Shania deeply, but he had a rough life too. He was married before Antoinette to a woman named Vicky Sue. When she was only 28, she was bound and shot, along with her oh. sister and a friend by a group of robbers who believed they had a huge amount of cash stashed hey that boy love the chocolate though gotta see it to gotta love to see it but imagine love to see what it. that does to you that boy love him some chocolate bradley had three children with vicky sue but he didn't feel able to raise them so they were raised by vicky sue's parents shania and carl were the first children he raised on his own but shania wouldn't be in his care for long what happened in 2009 shania was a kindergarten That's Michael Jackson died. at Morganton Road Elementary School. That year, Antoinette asked Brad to pass their daughter on to her. She was ready to be a mom. She now lived with her sister, Brenda Davis, and her boyfriend, Jeroy Smith, in their trailer home. It wasn't a luxurious situation. Brenda and Jeroy had kids themselves, and they would all sleep crammed in one room so that Antoinette could Dang. take the other bedroom. However, Brad said she had asked if she could be a mother, and I felt she was sincere in asking. Should I go and top I left? To give her a chance. So in September 2009, Shania and Carl went on to live with Antoinette and her sister. But Brad's sister Carrie and his other friends all pointed to the same thing. Shania did not seem well under Antoinette's care. Brian even painted a more disturbing of Antoinette. Indeed, Brian is angry at Bradley for sending Shania to live with her mother in the first place. He had yeah, seen I the bad bet. signs when she would spend as little as a weekend with her mom. So why didn't he think of the risks? Call it reckless or wanting to see the good in people, yeah. Brad trusted his ex-wife. He wanted her to have the experience of being a mother and believed she had gotten her life on track. But just two months would pass and Brad would regret his trusting nature for I the thought rest that was of Quavo. his life. 
It was November 10th, 2009, just before sunrise, in their Sleepy Hollow trailer home. Brenda and Jeroy woke up to what sounded like someone trying to break into their home. Listen, bro. Like Michael Jackson said, if you can't feed your baby, then don't have a baby. Home. The sound then stopped and they went back to bed. But just a half hour later, Antoinette burst into their room close to tears. Have you seen Shania? She asked. Brenda and Jeroy jumped out of bed. Oh. This was a serious situation. A five-year-old girl was missing. Had she been taken by My heart would drop, the boy. house half an hour earlier? Or no, was that are. sound Shania opening the door and leaving on her own? Brenda, Jeroy, and Antoinette dressed up to go outside and look around. But before they left, seven-year-old Carl added something crucial. He'd seen someone else in the home shortly beforehand. When Brenda heard this, she knew Shania had been kidnapped, so she urged oh. her sister to call 911. Shockingly, Antoinette was hesitant. Why wouldn't the mother call the police first thing when her small child is missing? she has Antoinette something to do with to it. ask around and look for herself before going through with the call. Almost as if she believed That's she weird, would bother bro. the emergency services in vain. While Antoinette went outside and knocked on all the Sleepy Hollow trailer home doors, her sister and her boyfriend stayed indoors and spoke with Carl. When they asked him who he'd seen, earlier that night he said mono mono was the nickname of a man look called at this nigga Mario McNeil. he used to date brenda for a while and according to some sources he gave her the money necessary for the rent deposit it's always the ex the bro home. whichever Not the me. case mario and brenda had called it quits and now mario lived with the mother of his 18 month old baby april a turry but mario wasn't a family man not by a long you don't look like it nigga like the predator and cheating on April with every woman in Fayetteville. A Dang. few days after Shania's disappearance, he would literally tell the police that on the night between November 9th and 10th, he texted all the females in his phone. <laughs> he would tell them many more things, but for now, back to our story. What? Brenda and Jeroy asked Carl several that times nigga was starving. if he was sure he'd seen Mono in their home that night, and he said yeah. So Brenda called Mono, but he didn't answer. Then Jeroy called April, and she said Mono was not with her. Something mm. was amiss. Meanwhile, Antoinette returned from her walk through Sleepy Hollow. She said she knocked on everyone's door, but no one seemed to have seen Shania. Again, Brenda insisted that her sister call the police. Should have been called the police. Antoinette promised to do so. Brenda and Jeroy went outside, only to notice there was feces on the railings. Okay, ma'am, how can I feces. help you? I woke up this morning and my daughter was not in the house. I don't know if she walked out. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but she's not here. How old is your daughter? Wow, she is an actor, huh? Five. And your door was not unlocked. That's what you're telling me? No, it was not unlocked. But I'm telling you, she knows how to unlock it. I'm hoping that she didn't unlock it and walk out. This was happening at 6.52 a.m. Hmm. By now, Mono was long gone with Shania. Shortly after 6 a.m. that morning, Mono checked into the Comfort Inn Suites in Sanford, an hour north of Fayetteville. He used his oh, that's how you pronounce that and word. checked in on his own. However, he mentioned to the desk clerk that he was traveling with his daughter to take her up to her mom in Virginia. After checking in at 7.16 a.m., Mario returned to his car in the back of the parking lot. This then is so he cruel, bro. to his hotel room carrying a girl covered in a blanket. No. After leaving Shania in his room, Mono returned downstairs and went to the breakfast room, where he got a banana, a muffin, and some juice. At this point, there was an Amber Alert issued for Shania. Police and search dogs were scouring Fayetteville, and people all over North Carolina were on the lookout. Such was Jacqueline Lee, the desk clerk Mono had spoken to. When he saw him walking into the hotel with Shania, she thought she resembled the kid in the Amber Alert. Her shift was ending, though, so when her colleague came in, she told her to keep an eye on Mono and the girl. Back in Sleepy Hello, detectives were interviewing she could have been saved one by one officer elizabeth culver was the first to knock on the trailer home store where antoinette brenda Jeroy, and the kids were at she also observed the nasty substance on the railings but antoinette had poured Wait, what is water feces on them in an attempt to clean it the police also found a comforting blanket in a trash nearby oh, let me, let me google the blanket it. had been in the living room of their trailer recently the blanket also had feces on it when the police interviewed the family, they noticed they were all agitated in different ways. Seven-year-old Carl wouldn't answer a question without looking at Meaning. his aunt, 
for approval first. He said he remembered his little From sister bowels. coming to bed on November 9th, but he didn't remember Boop. her leaving the bedroom. However, he'd seen Mono inside the trailer park. Oh, but when the officers no. wanted to corroborate this story with Antoinette and Brenda, they hit a dead end. They were both looking at their phones and texting all the time, almost ignoring the cops in the room. So Elizabeth Culver decided to bring them to the police station. These are not smart people, bro. As Antoinette and Brenda were being driven down, Elizabeth and her partner Daniel looked at the CCTV footage around their trailer home. But it was the CCTV footage at the Comfort Inn Hotel that would reveal the most. At 7.34 a.m., Mono left room 201, carrying Shania on his shoulder as he went into the elevator. He was still holding her this way as he left the she was hotel probably so and scared, walked down bro. the sidewalk. When he exited the hotel, Matthew Argyle, the maintenance worker, noticed him and the girl, who seemed to be in a deep sleep. He said, hello, trying to get Mono's attention, but he just looked back at Matthew and said nothing. Matthew thought Mono was creepy, so he followed him subtly to the parking lot. Mono put Shania in the rear right passenger side of his car. Then he got into the driver's seat and lit up a cigarette. After he finished his cigarette, Mono drove to the front entrance of the hotel where he entered on his own. He approached the new desk clerk, Regina, and asked her for a security deposit. He said he was going to drive her daughter to her mom in Virginia. As she told Jacqueline Virginia. earlier, Regina handed him a receipt and off he went. Shortly after, a housekeeper came down so to the So she could have been saved multiple times. Regina something. she just cleaned room 201 and she found two small, clear, open plastic packets with white powder residue inside. Possibly bags. Yeah, when Regina saw the Amber Alert team, she called the police. Around 8 a.m., Mono was driving down a highway when he texted Brenda, hey. It was in reply to her own hey some hours ago when they were trying to get a hold of him. But by now, Brenda was being interrogated at the police station and Mono's phone was being tracked. So Brenda wrote back to Mono, but their conversation was supervised. Brenda, you been to my house? Mono, no, why? Brenda, you lying. Mono, no. Can I come though? Brenda, hell no. Mono, damn, it's like that? Him there? Brenda, don't text me no mo. Mono, sure, whatever. Who your baby dad call my baby, my asking for me. What the hell is going on? It's funny. Mono was calling Brenda out for reaching out to April and asking about his whereabouts. Well, it's not really funny. I'm confused. He had Shania's dead body in his car. When the police made their wow. way to the after what Regina the? called the Amber Alert hotline, room 201 had been partially cleaned. The trash had been taken out and the towels had been removed, but the bedding had not been changed yet. Other detectives analyzed the hotel's CCTV footage and concluded Mono was with Shania. FBI agent Frank Brostrom was in charge of analyzing Mono's phone records. In the late afternoon of November 10th, Frank arrived at Sleepy Hollow together with the local police. By the end of the day, they had tracked Mono and Shania to the Highway 87 area between Spring Lake and Sandberg. Also, mm. by the end of the day, Brenda had finally told the cops Carl had seen Mono at the trailer house the night before. Brenda also said she saw Mono trying to talk to Antoinette shortly before the incident. Antoinette's response to the police, I don't have sh to say to you. I just want to know where my mother effing baby's at. On November 12th, Mono was found and arrested. His car was taken in as evidence and thoroughly analyzed by a forensic team. Is Shania, Shania still in there? been missing for over two days now, but detectives were still hopeful she was alive. Mono was interviewed, but told he was free to go if he wanted to. He wasn't cuffed and his phone wasn't taken away. In fact, he was allowed to use it during interview breaks. It was during this interview that he said he was the cheating type. This is how how he justified Bro, that he what? was out on the streets on the night between November 9th and November 10th. However, he denied visiting Brenda's trailer home that night and denied knowing who Shania was. Excuse me? He dated Brenda. He was at her home several times. He knew Antoinette's kids all too well. They he just denied don't. knowing Shania, taking her, driving her. Bro, if you're in this situation, get a lawyer. Cause you not you can't fool the police. They're trained to dissect liars and things like that.
her and even visiting the Comfort Inn Hotel. When the cops showed him a photo of him at the hotel, he still denied it. When they showed him the hotel <laughs> records of a Mario McNeil checking in Face on the of morning an idiot, of November right? 10th, Mono said maybe he'd lost his ID and someone else checked in with it. However, 54 minutes later, he admitted he was there with Shania. That night, he said he received a text message from Brenda's phone to come to Sleepy Hollow and pick Shania up on the porch. He did as he was told, then drove her to the hotel where he took white powder. Then Mono said he got a call from an unknown person instructing him to take Shania to a dry cleaning establishment at the corner of Country Club Drive and Ramsey Street. He said he delivered Shania to a group of people driving a gray Nissan Maxima. Then Mono said he was waiting for a call to come and kill her. FBI agent Frank Brostrom asked him to expand on that, but he would not. But, but all this texted Mono for, to pick for a Shania five year old? I don't... And no unknown people had messaged or called him either. At the end of the interview, Mono was arrested and charged with the murder of Shania Davis. Yeah, get him out of here. came to Antoinette, the interview get her out of here too. filled with even more lies. First, she blamed her, her exes, her friends, and all those around her for everything that had gone wrong in her life. Accountability. She and tried to distract the police officers from the actual question. What happened to Shania? Then, she went quiet. As the cops confronted her with more and more evidence, she kept saying, I don't have shit to say to you. As if they knew where Shania was, but didn't want to tell her. It was the other way around. Only she could shed some light. But these detectives were well-versed in homicide investigations. So they knew when and where to apply pressure. You see, I'm trying to tell you. To confess. Finally, they know. she revealed her daughter had never been kidnapped. We know she that. We know that. her out to Mono for a meek $200. Pimped she her. said, I gave her to him to cover $200. He was only supposed to have sex. Initial reports claimed that... What do you mean he was only supposed to have intercourse with your five-year-old daughter? I don't even want to watch this video no more. Antoinette owed Mono money for drugs through Cumberland County District Attorney Bill West. Wait, what? Owed Mono money for drugs. For drugs, I knew District it. District Attorney Bill West later stated that this was not true. He said Mono had lent Antoinette two hundred dollars to buy food and pay for a hotel room when she and her children found themselves homeless. In either case, Antoinette didn't have the money to pay Mono back. The intoxicated man told her he either wanted money or. And that's when Antoinette offered him Shania. That's, she was that's five disgusting. years old. Antoinette claimed that she tried to stop Mono from taking her daughter that night. But Billy West doesn't believe her. Remember the feces found on the blanket? Yeah, what, the why was there feces? According to him, this is proof Shania was hurt at her home. I don't even know what to say about this, you guys. It is sickening that anyone would do this For to a real, small child. Is. But to think a mother could sell off her daughter this way, knowing what would happen, is unspeakable. He was only supposed to have as if that would have been a fair debt settlement. Like, How would have Shania lived with this experience? Knowing she would have been traumatized. Let her be violated to get out of paying $200. Antoinette Davis was charged with human trafficking, Thank you. conspiracy, Thank you. kidnapping, Thank you. civil servitude, Thank you. taking indecent liberties <laughs> with a minor, Thank and second-degree murder. Thank you. On November Get out of here. 15, Under the one jail. of the investigators handling this case called Alan Rogers, Mono's attorney. The police had received some vague tips about finding Shania's body from Rogers, but this was a sort of telephone game. As Mono's attorney, Rogers wasn't supposed to help the police convict his client, so he gave the DA some tips, and the DA told the police about this. Now the investigator wanted Rogers to speak up. Shania's body had to be found. After multiple back and forth phone calls, Rogers pointed the police to the spot in the woods they should be looking at. A big search team scoured the area for two days straight. At around 1 p.m. on November 16th, a week after Shania's disappearance, her body was found under a log by an officer and his search dog. Found her? Right here. All right, I'll call him. Call, call come in and tell him. Oh my god. Yo, police gotta be some strong people, bro. Imagine seeing that, bro.
I would be trauma. I don't not want to see no dad body, but you know what I'm saying? I remember I went to a funeral with my grandma's funeral when I was younger. That joint still like haunt me to this day. Well, not haunt me, but like I just don't I don't want to see nothing like that. But to see like a five year old girl just lifeless, just knowing what happened to her, getting violated and all this other stuff, and she just in the woods, dead, bro. Like, that's so sad. I ain't gonna lie. We got a tip. Somebody in the parking lot said that they had heard on the news or something that they, uh, the guy admitted to killing the young child and dumping her where there was deer carcasses and trash. She was simply dumped in a shedded area near the intersection of Highway 87 and Walker Road. Mono hadn't even gone through the trouble of digging a hole. She was partially naked and around her were indeed deer carcasses and trash. I don't even know. I'm a little overwhelmed right now. So it's just, wow. it's a lot. I'm just, you know, I'm glad. Glad we were able to help. Mario McNeil was charged with first degree murder. His reaction? Now, according to the Fayetteville Observer, McNeil says his lawyer should not have told police where to find the girl, saying it hurt his case. Your cook. Mano showed no remorse and said no apology for doing the Look at absolute him. worst. A scrub, Australia. straight he bum. being the center of attention. He continued to smirk and grimace at the cameras whenever they would film him in court. The Fayetteville police also found explicit images of a young girl on Mono's phone. He was the absolute worst. Yet, he fought tooth and nail to get a light punishment. He filed pretrial motions to avoid the prosecution. You're cooked, buddy. The You're cooked. You're he cooked. used the You're North cooked. Carolina Racial Justice Act. Cooked. Yeah, right. Like that has anything to do with beating and You're killing cooked. a child. Exactly. He recanted all statements made to officers and faked agreements between him and the prosecution. But none of his motions were accepted. Now I'm good on this video. Listen. Cug and booty tickled in jail as we speak. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Appreciate it watching this. Be a better person, bro.